life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundant, life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I just wanted to welcome everybody today to the Z Church service and and we have a wonderful service for you today. And uh, just stay tuned. And uh, I'm going to have Gail come right in and lead us with, with a prayer. Gail, go right ahead. Praise the Lord. Let's everyone lift our hands as we enter into his spirit this morning. Jesus, as we come before you boldly, you say come boldly into your presence. Jesus, that we ask that your anointing upon our pastors this morning as they bring forth the word. Lord, touch those hearts that when he speaks the word, that would be like a magnet drawing your spirit to the words that he's going to speak this morning, Jesus, and touching our hearts that we might be changed forever in Jesus' name. We glorify you and give you all the praise this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Brother Joseph, will you take us to the praise and worship? Thank you, Gail. Here we go. I had one song practice, but this one here. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Said, Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Said, Glory, glory to the land. Take us into the land. We will conquer in your name and proclaim that Jesus reigns. Said, Hail, hail, line of Judah. How wonderful you are. Said, Hail, hail, line of Judah. You are. you are said hail Jesus you're my king your life frees me to sing I will praise you all my days you're perfect in all your ways said glory glory to the land Take us into the land. We will conquer in your name and proclaim that Jesus reigns. Come on, hail, hail, light of Judah. How wonderful you are. He's the Lion of Judah. Huh. 
He's the root and offspring of David. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Come on, if you backsliding, you need to be residing. Ooh, come on, here we go. Said, <laughs> hell, hey, land of Judah. Break every chain and give to us the victory again and again. Oh, oh the lion of Judah shall break every chain and give to us the victory again and again come on Thank you, Joseph. Yes, he is powerful. It's now a privilege and an honor for me to present our dear pastors, Larry and Loretta, who are based on, who have, both have based their ministry, both on the Word and in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, let us feel the love of God they have and that love that they transmit to all the persons they've known all over the world, in all the countries that they visit and they have lived on. Praise God. And also, uh, God gives them the word of knowledge so they can talk about so many things. <laughs> Cinema, science, culture, geography, <laughs> everything. Yes, it, it, they, you can apply to them what it says in Coloss Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer to all persons. Amen. Yes, glory to God. I leave you now with our dear pastors. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you so you much. Lord. Oh, so, yeah, you can talk about science and math. Oh, well, mathematics is science. Movies. Well, oh, good. One of my favorite movies is Old oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah. <laughs> so there. Well, welcome to Z Church. And what a wonderful Z Team family we have great, I prayer know, today. great prayer today the word of the lord went forth we have been praying for as you perhaps heard uh joseph as he was ministering you know i just love it about what well, all of our z team they follow after the spirit he practiced another song but this he followed after the holy spirit and i tell you god is wonderful isn't he he's you know i used to hear people say god is good all the time, all the time, God is good. So it's wonderful. Did I have coffee before church? I don't think you did. I think it's just uh, the anointing of God. Praise but, God. But uh, what is it that Joseph said? You don't, don't 
Don't you, backslide. You got to resign. You got to resign. <laughs> if you've been backsliding, it's now the time to reside you know, or something like yeah, that. I, he was right. I almost cracked myself up. Now listen. Uh, uh, Joseph is saying something. Say it, Joseph. I almost cracked myself up. I almost <laughs> messed yeah. myself up in the song. Well, if, if I'd come up with that line, I would have cracked myself up too. So, um, Listen, we're happy about the service. We've got a, a lot going on today. It's going to be great. I've got a great message for it. But before we go any further, thank you, Z Team, for everything you do. And thank you to all of our friends on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and uh, wherever you're receiving this and whenever you're receiving this. We love you. The revival is online and it's right here at Z Church. So you come to the right place for believing God for miracles today. And if you need an answer to prayer, tell them what they need to do. They need to get in contact um, by email to chat. our chat, Facebook chat, and uh, the, all of the prayer requests will be uh, given to Terry, our prayer team leader. And uh, at some point in the service, we will be praying live for you. And uh, so just get ready and, and expect. And I want to just say shout out to our uh, head deacon. He was away from us last week. And so it's great to have him back. It's good to have and, Gail back. And was... Gail was away and Steve was away. And uh, anyone else that we miss, welcome back. So and, praise uh, God. We have Sebastian with us. Hello, we have Sebastian. Sebastian. Well, Sebastian had a miracle. Well, that's why he's here today. Yes. He's going to... He's going to give God glory. So yes. Sebastian, uh, tell us what God just did for you. Before you do, uh -huh. uh, you and I have a real vested interest in, in this miracle. Yes, we do. We, we prayed hard because we're believing God for help with our visa here yes. in Spain. Yes. And so, uh, Sebastian, believe you me, we prayed earnestly for you. So go ahead and tell us what God did. Um, uh, Tim, so, <clears throat> hey. spotlight on there. Thank you, Larry, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Well, basically, I needed a appointment uh, appointment uh, with the German embassy to renew my passport. Otherwise, I was not going to be able to apply to my master's. And it was very, very, very hard to get an appointment. And in a matter of days, what I thought was going to be impossible happened just like that. ECS, ECS5. Wait, it That's happened what after does. what? <laughs> after praying a lot and a lot and trusting strongly and standing strong in, in our faith that yeah, God was going Sebastian, to solve. Sebastian, I feel for you because I know how the, how these immigration issues can drag out. Uh, we, we can we, write a book about yeah, it. We, we really can. We, we may been, be a play. We've been through it many times. And that's one of the areas we learn how to pray. Oh, so, yes. So, so I remember, Pastor, you were praying. You said, I had to talk with Sebastian. And then you said, uh, let's pray. And we said it was going to, we declared, you know, because Pastor Sharon ministered about seeing. So we saw Sebastian with his uh, with his visa, and we see ourselves with it, and so praise God, and we're seeing our loved ones back in the fall, uh, oh, right? That's exactly right. So, Sebastian, your mom and dad were praying for you. We were praying for you. I know see you were church. praying. And let's everybody give the Lord a, a thank you for that miracle. I mean, God Amen. Glory to, yeah. Him. Glory to Jesus. Him. Glory to I know Glory the Lord. Lord. Happy. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess everybody knows this. Uh, Anna Maria and Javier are Sebastian's mother and father. Yes. Uh, and you know, also, I wanted to just say this, Pastor, before you get into the message. You see how that uh, Sebastian gave glory to God. We want all of you, as you receive miracles, because we believe that God hears our prayers. We are as Christ is. And Jesus, before one of the difficult miracles or uh, situations at Lazarus' grave, he said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And we believe that that's the same for us because Christ in us and we're in Christ. So please, we encourage you to just give a glory to God. And I want to just say shout out to Sabrina. She didn't give me permission, but I'm, I believe she's okay with it. When you ministered on about two weeks ago about giving 
a, uh, a like a tearful offering. Actually, I don't know what else to say, but you were talking about how that you give out of a sacrifice and the Lord be begin to minister to her and uh, there was something very precious she was like the lady that had the the alabaster box and uh, she said that the lord dealt with her she said it was very difficult because it was precious to her and so she made a decision that what god said and she gave me she in, uh invested it in my life almost two days later she was getting all of the getting blessings directly related to that gift. So we just want you to know that um, Z Church is good ground. We are good ground. And uh, we encourage you that if you need a prayer, uh, an answer to a prayer, in the comments section on YouTube or on uh, Facebook, write us. We have folks that are monitoring that right now, and they will they will send your prayer request over to us. Pastor Loretta and our team will pray for you. And I want to tell our team, uh, uh, be listening to the Holy Spirit because we may call on you at any time during this service. Great. Amen. Praise God. Well, Pastor, I call you blessed and I look forward to the ministry. Amen. Okay. Sorry, Thank you, can Sebastian, I, for coming can I and, Sorry. Uh, can I interrupt for a very short time? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, as we were talking this week, all our incomes were garnished. That's the word, no? And we couldn't tie. We were, I was so worried. But there was an extraordinary income now, and I could tie. And I wanted to give glory to God because of that. Yeah. Praise God for that. Well, praise the Lord. Oh, I, I actually noticed that gift came through. So I knew you had a miracle. That's good. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Well, this is exciting. It is exciting. Um, I have a dear friend. I've known him ever since he was uh, just graduated from high school. He's, he's uh, a few years younger than I am, but uh, he's actually my publisher, Keith Provence. And uh, whenever there's an issue in his life, he calls me. Uh, his son, Ryan, has had uh, several medical miracles uh, because of prayer. And Keith told me one day, he said, uh, he calls me ambassador. He said, ambassador, I started thinking back down through the years, and every single time that you and I agreed, I got my prayers answered. It's really important when you find someone you can agree with. So you need to find someone who knows the word, believes the word, and believes in miracles, and uh, hook up with that person. Now, we here at Z Church, we believe not just in praying, but we believe in answered prayer. So uh, we're going to be praying Amen. for you today. I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm excited about my message, Thou Power. And we're going to jump right into this. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for blessing everyone who's watching and listening. May they receive and may they achieve what you have for them today, because I believe that today some lives are going to turn around. You're bringing some people back home. There's been some people that have kind of strayed a little bit but they haven't gone completely away. And today is their day. You're bringing them back into the fold. I believe that in Jesus' name. And if you believe it, CT must give a Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. God wants to make the backslider rich. That, that's amazing if you think about it. God wants to make the backslider rich. And I know a lot of people are thinking, well, how's that going to happen? You know, they've turned their backs on God. They've walked away. Well, God's got a plan to make the backslider rich, but there's a hitch. <laughs> there's, always a, there's always a condition, right? And I'll share that with you in just a moment. I'm going to give you our scripture for today, Job 22, 23. If you return, there's the hitch right there. That's the condition, backslider. If you return... God has something wonderful in store for you. You will be built up. You shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Then shall you lay up gold as dust. Praise God. And the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. That's a lot of gold right there. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Praise the Lord. And you shall have plenty of silver. So there we hear gold and there we hear silver. You know, so many times people 
discount the blessings of God. The Bible says the Lord gives us the power to get wealth that he might establish his covenant. And oftentimes people spiritualize that and say, well, you know, God will give you peace. Yes, he will, but he's talking about real gold and real silver. <laughs> he's talking about money, durable goods, currency, uh, scratch, bread, lana, as they call it in Mexico, dinero, <laughs> praise God, soles de oro, uh, British pounds, euros. I'm talking about money. And God says to the backslider, if you'll come back, I will make you rich. He's not going to punish you. He's not going to chastise you. He's not going to upgrade you. He's going to welcome you back. It's easy to come back to the Lord. It is the goodness of God that leads to repentance. I, I, was, I was reading something about backsliders one day, and this person said, well, you can come back to the Lord, but it's not easy, and it'll take a while, and there's a lot of requirements. Don't listen to that kind of stuff. He will, he will wash all your sins away. He'll kill the fatted calf and have a Texas barbecue for you. He'll put a big gold ring on your finger and put his robe around you and welcome you back into his family. No, he's not going to upbraid you. He's not going to say shame on you. Look at what you did. Now I'm going to make you earn the right to be in my house. You know, that's not what he says at all. Too many people have that picture of God. Here's what God says. If you come back to me, I'll make you rich. I'll give you gold. I'll give you silver. That's a pretty good incentive to come back. Don't you think it is the goodness of God that leads to repentance? Repentance means turning around. It means doing a 180 Amen. degrees. You're going in this direction, the wrong direction. God says, I'm getting ready to turn you, turn you around and move you in the right direction. Praise God. When you find out how good God is and how generous he is and how he lavishes his treasures upon you, it won't be difficult for you to make a decision to serve him. Let me see this. The way of the transgressor is hard, but the blessings of God make one rich. Let me see. Pick one. <laughs> Thank me, you, Jesus. Get my, uh, get my preacher's rag out here. You know, we preachers are always needing to wipe our faces and and swing our flags around here. Praise God, you're going to be shouting in a moment. Let me finish this scripture. Uh, for then, after you come back, and God's going to give you gold and give you silver, for then you shall have your delight in the Lord and, uh, and lift up your face unto God. Let me keep reading. Put on my cheaters here. Because there's... Just about done here. Then you shall make your prayer unto him, and he shall hear you, and you shall pay your vows. Praise God. I mentioned that this sermon is called vow power. There is a power in making a vow. In the Old Testament, it's called a nadar or a nadir. And it's, uh, it's something we do out of our own free will. It's not something that we're compelled to do. It's something that we're led to do, that we want to do. We don't make a vow because someone is holding a gun to our head and say, pay up. We're not making a vow because God is threatening us with hell if we don't pay a vow. A, a nadir vow is something that we can do out of the generosity of our own heart. Uh, it's a vow of love. It, it's a vow of celebration. It's a vow of trust. Jacob gave vow unto God. And he said, seeing that God, that God will take me back to my father's house, seeing that he will clothe me, seeing that he will feed me, seeing that he will take care of me, I will give him over and above my tithe a tenth. You've never heard that before. I'm going to preach on it one day. It'll blow your mind. One day, Dr. John and I were talking and he was sharing some things with me. Uh, John Evanzini, I'm talking about my mentor. And he said, well, the next time we talk, you share something with me that God has shown you. I said, give me two minutes and I'll tell you right now. And uh, he said, okay, let's have it. And I said, Jacob's tithe, it wasn't a tithe. He said, I knew it wasn't a tithe. 
He was taught how to tithe by his father. He grew up in a family of tithers. I said, that's right. And I explained to him what it was, and it blew his mind. He said, I have been wondering about that for years. Well, I'm going to share it with you uh, in one of the one of the weeks to come here. But let's get back to this. He said, then you'll you will make a vow. Uh, God's going to bless you with gold. God's going to bless you with silver. Praise the Lord. And you'll make a vow. What does this vow do? It puts you in a position to receive those blessings, to honor God. If you honor him, he'll honor you. If you give to him, he'll give to you. This is something we do in good faith because we believe God's word, and therefore we respond. It's a response to God. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. Um, Jeremiah 3.14. Turn, O backsliding children. God's talking to someone here today saith the Lord, for I am married to you. God is married to whom? You say, well, the bride, to the backslider. <laughs> yes, he's married to the bride, but he's married to the backslider, and, and, and God doesn't believe in divorce. So think about that. He's married to you. You may be strained from God, but he's not strained for you. He's still believing that you're going to come back because he's married to you. He has an everlasting covenant with you. He still claims you. He still wants you. He's still in love with you. He still desires you. He's married to you. Listen to me today. The Holy Spirit. Spirit is speaking through me to some people who've strayed, and maybe you think, well, you know, God's uh, God's done with me, and you know, He's He's given up on me. And no, He hasn't. That's not the nature of God to give up on anyone ever. He said, if we'll come to Him, He will come to us. A couple of scriptures about that. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Psalm one hundred three. How about this? His mercies never, never, never come to an end. Lamentations 3.22. Praise God. With everlasting grace, I will have compassion on you. Isaiah 54.8. Do you know what Paul said? The apostle Paul said, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. There's never been a sin that is so great that God can't forgive it. There's never been a sin. There's so many people who think one little infraction, one little mistake, one little error, and you're doomed. No, where sin abounds, see what God does, his grace lasts forever, so he just moves, he just moves the goalpost. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He, he, he Amen. just keeps expanding grace and expanding grace so that you'll never have an excuse for not coming back to God. He's got plenty of grace for you. He has not run out of grace with you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I hear people uh, bad mouth in grace as though it's a terrible thing. What's terrible about grace? What's terrible about God exercising his, his everlasting love and mercies and, and uh, unconditional love on our behalf? What's wrong with that? People underestimate God. Uh, Paul talked about abundance of grace, and that word is actually Hyperion, is which, where we get the word hyper. And I've heard preachers talk about it as a derogatory, all oh, this hyper grace message. No, that's exactly what it says in the Bible, abundance of grace, hyper grace, hyper super uh, supercalifragilistic expialidocious. I can't think of a bigger word than that, abundance of grace. Thank God for abundance of grace. Child, child of God, he still loves you. You may have strayed, but he never let go of you. And he's got more than enough grace to bring you back into his household and to lavish gold upon you and silver upon you, make you rich. I'm going to challenge some people today to trust this word that's coming your way. If you come back to God, if you'll do what the Bible says, Come back to God, renew your vows into God, repay your vows into God. That's the hitch. You will experience the everlasting grace of God, the tender mercies of God. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Amen. Let me give you some statistics that are kind of, they'll, they'll make you think. 3,500 people leave the church in the USA, in the United States, every day. 3,500 people 
walk out of church and don't come back every day. Are you one of those 3,500 a day who's, who's uh, as they say, don't let the door <laughs> uh, hit you on your backside? Side? Well, 30, you're not alone. 3,500 people. There's, there's this uh, apostasy that's going on in the world today. 1.2 million people leave the Lord every year. And we're just talking about the USA. Worldwide, it's, it's much greater. Uh, unchurched people are, there's far more unchurched people here in Europe than there are in the States. You're doing better than Europe. Uh, my job's cut out for me. I live in Europe. Uh, church attendance is terrible. Uh, you know, over 60% of the people say that they're agnostic or atheist. Uh, uh, now, let me give you some definitions. Listen up. Apostasy or falling away is the act or the state of rejecting the Christian faith. That's not backsliding. That is turning your back forever on God. That's not a choice he makes. That's a choice people make. They turn their backs on, and there's a word for it today. You know, on the internet, they have words for everything, and it's called ex that. Ex evangelizing, ex evangelizing, ex evangelizing. People say, I'm an ex evangelist. What are they saying? I don't believe in God anymore. And it's also called deconversion. And there are groups of people who work at deconverting Christians and they gang up on them and brainwash them and try to get them to renounce their faith in God. That's an active movement. It's a movement from hell. Don't listen to that stuff. Don't get caught up with these people who are God haters. Go back to some people who love God and fellowship with them. Come to us. We love God. <laughs> and we fellowship Amen. with God. And we welcome you into our fellowship. We'll pray yes. for you, encourage Amen. you, feed your faith, give you something positive to chew on. We're not going to talk you out of God. We're going to talk you into God. Praise the Lord. It pays to serve God. He's going to bless you with gold and silver. That's Amen. not my word. That's the promise that's in the Bible. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So let me tell you about backsliding. Backsliding is getting lukewarm or leaving our first love. There are people who are in church who are, they qualify for this. They're lukewarm. They're still going to church. They have the church habit, but you know, they're not turned on like they used to. They don't pray like they used to. They're not excited about it like they once were. And maybe it's not entirely their fault. Maybe the ministry has failed them. Maybe we have maybe we have disappointed them. I, I hope that I'm not disappointing people. The gospel is exciting. And if I seem excited, that's because of the power of God is a quickening spirit. You get around the Holy Ghost and it will put some high octane in you. He'll, he'll put some oil in your Ford and you'll keep on trucking for the Lord. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to be around the right people. You need to be around people. Paul called them of like precious faith. Get around some believing believers. And let me tell you something. Online church is real church. We worship God in the spirit. We're one in the spirit. Paul said we may be absent in the flesh, but we're one in the spirit. And so online church is real church because where we really fellowship is in the realm of the spirit. Yes. And you get ready because you're going to see some greater and greater things going on in Z Church, I promise you. Yes. It's getting ready to happen. I can feel it. It's boiling up on the inside of me. I can hear it in the prayers of our Z team. I know it by the spirit. We're getting ready to hit, be hit by an online revival, and we want you to be a part of it. Amen. Praise Glory. Amen. We're welcome, welcoming you back. Some people think that backsliding is, you know, you just you just go into sin full bore. You just, you know, you just want to uh, be rebellious and and debauched and and you know the, all. The, I'm not going to get into that. You know what I'm talking about? Full blown sin <laughs> without any restraints. And people think that's what a backsliding is. No, backsliding is drawing back, moving back. I've noticed something over the years, and and I've shared this with other preachers, and they've noticed it. Who we have front row Christians, 
you know, they want to be on the front row. They want to be up there where the anointing is. And they, they're dancing and shouting and they're good givers. And then if you watch them, many times their giving will fall off. And it's always an indication they're getting ready to leave. Always. When they're tithing and they're giving. I know sometimes people go through problems. They can't help it. I understand that. But I'm talking about people who just withhold their giving and withholding their tithes. And, and I've watched what happens. They'll move from the front row to the middle of the church, from the middle of the church, a few Sundays later, to the back of the church, and after that, out the back door. Preachers, you who have bricks and mortar churches, pay attention to what I'm saying. If you're if your people who've been solid behind you start to start to creep back towards the back door, start praying, start reaching out to them, ask them what's going on. Right? Amen. If their giving falls off, that's one of the vitals. You know, the doctor is going to look at your blood pressure and your respiration and all that, all these vitals. Well, we preachers need to pay attention to vitals. I've heard preachers say, Well, I never, I never pay any attention to what people give. Well, Jesus did. He sat in the in the temple over across from the treasury watching how people gave. He paid attention. Preacher, you need to pay attention. It is your sacerdotal duty, sacerdotal duty, that's a big word, it's your sacred duty, to receive tithes and offerings from the people. So pay attention. Praise God. Uh, tithes and offerings are important. Gifts are important. Vows to God are important. Now then, let's keep going. Sinning isn't the only sign of a backsliding. It's, it's growing lukewarm. And I'm talking to some people out there, and you don't, you don't want to sin. You're not a big, bad sinner. You don't even like it. It's not something you want to do. But you very well still may be a backslider because you've just drawn back. Instead of, you know, when you a sinner, when a, a Christian sin, everybody sins. In fact, the Bible says if we say, if we say we have no sin, we're liars. Everybody sins. Everyone misses the mark. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody zigs when they should have zagged, right? Everybody G's when they should haw. Oh, okay, I'm running out of comparison, but everybody sins. But here's here's the difference between a a, a believing believer and a backsliding believer. Uh, a believing believer does what David did. When we sin, we run to God. We don't run away from Amen. God. The backslider runs away from God. The person who loves God runs to him. So just because you've sinned doesn't make you a backslider. You can have basically no, you know, mortal sins in your life or venal sins in your life and still be a backslider because your heart has grown unsensitive to God. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you to draw close to God. Don't run from him. Run to him. I thought I would get through this message in about two minutes, but uh, uh, it said there in, in uh, Job 22 that we will recompense or restore our vows unto God. I had a friend who was Wounded in Vietnam. A dear friend of mine in Philadelphia. And because he was a Vietnam vet, uh, he was invited to give a prayer at this big meeting of Vietnam vets. It, it was an association of some sort. And all these vets in the Philadelphia area came together for this convention. And they invited my friend, they knew as a preacher, they invited him to say a prayer. Well, that was a mistake <laughs> because he was a spirit-filled, tongue-talking, word of faith, God-loving preacher. And he said, let me tell you what's wrong with you. It's not Agent Orange. It's not having an unthankful uh, electorate to come back to. It's not shell shock. It's not the trauma of war. He said, let me tell you what's going on. It's not the government and their lack of programs and you not being acknowledged, he, I, he said, here's why you're miserable. Here's why you're sick. Because when you were in Vietnam and you came under your fire, you made God a promise. You made a vow to God. And you said, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you or something like that. He said, I did. He said, I was wounded. My face was paralyzed. I was pinned down by enemy fire. 
in a rice paddy for five hours. And he said, there ain't no atheist in foxholes. He said, I prayed. And I said, God, if you get me out of here, I'll serve you. I'll go in the ministry. And he said, he, he got me out. He got you out. And he said, when I got out, I did what you did. I, I didn't serve God. I didn't fulfilled my vow. I didn't go into the ministry. I ran from God. He said, things got worse and worse. And he said, finally, I came to myself and surrendered my life back to God. And he said, God has been blessing me ever since. I have to tell you this. That was the last time they invited him to say a prayer over their conference. They were, they were, they were trying to get someone else to, to answer for their woes. So many people make vows to God of all kinds. You know, if, 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 if you'll heal my child, I'll do this for you. If you'll save my marriage, I'll do this for you. If you'll get me out of debt, I'll do this for you. And they make these vows. And, and God's good with that. He's the one who invented vows. He honors vows. He receives vows. He, he instructs people to give a vow. He's all for a vow, but only if you keep it. Because he said, the Bible says, if you make a vow and don't keep it, God won't have any pleasure in you. He'll have pleasure if you keep your vow. There was this preacher who was on an airplane, he admit, uh, and, and uh, across from him was a man that was so nervous. And, and the preacher looked over at him and he said, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And this guy said, I, first time flying, he said, I hate it. I hate it. Well, they had a little turbulence in the air, just a little ear pockets. And this guy over here grabbed a hold of the chair and he starts praying. And he said, oh, God, if you'll get me back on the ground, I'll give half of everything that I own to you. And the airplane came out of that turbulent air. It was smooth. They finished their trip. They landed safely. And the people were getting off the airplane. And the preacher walked up to that fellow and he said, I couldn't help but overhear your vow that you made to God. And he said, I want to let you know that I'm a missionary and uh, we have some projects and you could pay your vow right here to me right now. And the guy said, no preacher, I've made a better deal. He said, I told God that if I ever get back on another one of those things, he can have it all. You see what's messed up about that? In a time of trouble, you know, get me out of jail, get me out of debt, get me out of this problem and that problem. People uh, offer to do things for God and then they don't do it and things get worse. Uh, How many reasons are there to backslide? Gosh, I have a short list. Lack of interest, their schedules get too busy, they have negative experiences. You know, Christians aren't perfect. You can have problems in church. I've heard people say, well, there's too many hypocrites in church. Well, if you allow a hypocrite to stand between you and God, the hypocrite is actually closer to God than you are. All right. Disagreement with church teachings. We need to we need to agree on the majors, right? Major on the majors and minor on the minors. You're going to hear Amen. stuff you don't agree with. I hear stuff every day I don't agree with. I don't always agree with me. I've changed. <laughs> my wife. Uh, we're growing. We're learning. So, um, be mature. Some people say, well, uh, it doesn't work. I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. Well, there's a reason for that. And it's not God's fault. Uh, Envy of others. Well, you're blessing others. You don't bless me. People go to church and they get mad. They hear somebody give a testimony like Sebastian gives glory to God for getting him a miracle appointment at the German embassy. Well, God didn't get me through through the doors of the embassy. I was turned away. Well, that's not God's fault. There's a reason for that. Uncomfortable with giving. That's a stumbling stone for a lot of people. Exposure to conflicting beliefs. People get on the internet, they read all kinds of stuff, hear all kinds of stuff, and it messes them up. You need to be careful what you listen to on the internet. Find someone who's preaching the truth, who loves God, who's got the Holy Spirit. Find a group of people who love God and, and get hooked up with them. Listen to them. Receive from them. Let me see. Do I know a church like that? <laughs> Z Church. On, amen. Praise God. Scandals and controversies. Hey, uh, there's scandals in the church. Come on, grow up. Of course there are. People are people. And, uh, you know, there's no temptation that's not common to man. Uh, people dislike organized religion. Well, what do you like? Disorganized religion? Come on. Come on. Uh, sin and personal failure. Well, I sin, so I may as well just walk away from church. No, walk back in there, walk up to the altar, get forgiven, pick up where you left off. 
uh, laziness. I think a lot of people are backslidden just because they're lazy. They're just lazy. It takes effort to get involved with church. It takes effort to go to church. It takes effort to study the Bible and to pray. And a lot of people are just lazy. And that is a form of backsliding. And then some people have physical, mental, and spiritual issues. I'm going to minister to some of you right now. I've touched on several different things here. And if something kind of jumped out to you, that's something you need to pay attention to. If I struck a nerve, <laughs> the Holy Spirit struck a nerve, pay attention to that. Uh, we're not doing this to make you uncomfortable. We're preaching to give you some hope. And I want to go back to our original scripture. And this is absolutely the Bible. God says, if you'll come back to me, he's talking directly to backsliders, to people who've grown cold, who've kind of moved away from God, maybe not full-blown you know, uh, sinners, but just people have gotten cool in the Lord. You ought to get excited about this because every one of us have drawn back in some area or another at some time or another. So we all qualify for this blessing. He said, if you'll come back, I will lay up for you gold as dust and silver like stones. God says, if you'll come back to me, if you'll recompense, if you'll repay the vows, then I will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. Yes, God has promised not to punish the backslider. Listen, listen, listen to me right now. The Holy Ghost is talking through me. God does not have a desire to punish the backslider. It's not in his plan to punish the backslider. It's in his plan to prosper the backslider yes. when the backslider comes back. Amen. Amen. You say, well, what do I have to do? Uh, well, you need to do something. You need to do something. You need to make a, a dramatic step towards God. You need to do something that's going to resonate in your spirit. You need to do something of value. I mean, this costs Jesus his blood. Our salvation, he went through pain for us. He went through torture for us. He was separated from God for us. He went to hell from us. He took our diseases, and what he went through is difficult for us to comprehend. He gave all. You talk about making a vow. You talk about someone who, who put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. That's Jesus. He said, I'm all in on this. I'm going all in. I'm not holding back anything. I'm investing everything, every breath, every nerve, everything about my soul and my physical body and my emotional man. I'm investing it all in, in humanity, in the backslider, in the sinner. Now then it's our turn and we say, well, uh, you know, I'm sorry and I'm going to come back. <laughs> you know, uh, where very little is, is required, uh, there's very little incentive to, to kind of hedge our, our bet there, if I'm using the right words. There's very little incentive. David said, I'm not going to give God anything that costs me nothing. He understood this. He understood the joy of coming back to a loving, forgiving God. He understood personal sin and, and disappointment and character flaws. He had them all. But he also had a heart for God, and he didn't run from God. He ran into the temple, into the altar, and he grabbed a hold of the horns of the altar, and he said, only against thee have I sinned. He was real. He was honest. And he put his money where his mouth is. He actually gave billions to build the temple. Yeah. Praise God. There's someone listening to me right now. Praise God. Praise God. And you got your feelings hurt in church. They didn't treat you right. And you left church. You actually left fellowship with Jesus because you got your feelings hurt. Dear heart, we've all gotten our feelings hurt. Yeah. But that's not a reason to leave God. If we'll go to him, he'll put in the, he'll pour in the oil and the wine. He'll heal our broken hearts. 
Love covers a multitude of sin. I'm talking to someone right now. And, yes. and uh, uh, you know, you got offended over the money issue. There was someone who mishandled money. And you said, ah, I'm not going to a church like this. They talk too much about money. And, and you were listening to the enemy. That's, that's the kind of talk the enemy whispers in people's ears. Oh, look at them. Look at that. Look at that money. They want your money. No, no, no. Anyone who's truly called of God and has a heart for the ministry are not doing it for the money. They're doing it to reach souls and to help people. Yes. And more money means more ministry. Besides that, it's the way God set things up. Yes. He's the one who established the law of the tithe and, and the principles of sowing and reaping and the power of the nadir vow. I read this whole list of things of why people get offended. What, what, what offended you? What's your reason for leaving the church? What is it that caused you to cool your jets and get lukewarm? Walk away from Jesus. Oh, I know you say I still love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But the prodigal son had enough sense to go back to his father's house. And he found out that his father was waiting on him with open arms. God's waiting on you. Listen, we're waiting on you. I'm going to say a prayer for you. And you need to jump online right now and let us know that, that you prayed that prayer with us. Would you do that? Heavenly Father, I thank you right now for everyone who's listening to me, who's who's fallen away in some area of their lives, who've, who've been missing out on the excitement and the joy yes. of serving God. Yes. It's not going to get better for them unless they do something. They have to turn. They have to turn back toward you and not run away or stray, but come back today and make a decision to come back to stay. Yes, Praise God. The, the world is too perilous for us to play this kind of this kind of dangerous game that people are playing. It's not about just necessarily missing heaven and going to hell. It's about missing out on blessings. And we want you to have all the blessings that come with fellowshipping with God. Yes. Father, thank you for setting people free right now, right now. And, and give them a a revelation, a vision of themselves, happy again, turned on again, loving God again, into the word again, praying and celebrating and worshiping again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. And this is a, a two-part uh, altar call here. I can't come and lay hands on you. That's one of the shortcomings of of the online church. I'd love to, but there's another way that we can move towards God in a very positive way that's meaningful and it gets results, and that is through a vow. Praise God. It's your response to God, and you're recognizing him. I hear you. I, I, I've heard this message that Pastor Larry preached. And, and I know that I need to change and I'm ready to change and, and to prove to myself and to you and everybody else and to the devil, I'm going to do something today. I'm going to recompense. I'm going to restore the vow that I made to God. I, I'm way behind in tithes and offerings. Don't worry about that, dear heart. Don't worry about that. You do something right here today to express your love and your sincerity and God will accept it. And you don't have to, you don't have to worry about bygones. Let bygones be bygones, but let's start fresh and anew in Jesus name. I'm going to challenge you. Now I'm not really talking to our Z team. Our Z team are on fire. Our Z team are committed. Our Z team are givers. I'd be preaching to the choir if I were preaching to them. Now I'm reaching out right now to you who are watching on Facebook. I'm reaching out to you who are watching on YouTube. I'm reaching out to you who are watching on Twitch. You who follow us on Instagram and Twitter and the other social media, I'm reaching out to you and I'm saying, if you want to inherit this promise of the gold of Ophir and silver like stones, you need to repay your vow. You need to pay your vow. Simple as that. Yes, good word. Simple Amen. as that.
Father, I pray for everyone who's watching and listening and those who, who feel tender in their heart towards you right now. I pray that you would, by the Holy Spirit, give them the courage to repay their vow to you. Yes. Something significant. Yes. Something meaningful. Yes. Something that's the, the proof of sincerity. Yes. Yes. And they're doing it as much for themselves as they are for anyone. You don't need our money, but you want to you want to open up a window so that you can bless each of us. And these vows open windows. Father, thank you for giving people the strength and the courage to obey you. And may they pay attention to what happens in the weeks and months and the year to come. Praise God. You may see something instantly, like Sebastian did. But give it some time. I mean, a year is not a long time when it comes to something significant. Prove the Lord and see if he won't open those windows of blessings. Backslider, get happy today. God was going to make you rich. He's got a plan to make you rich with gold and silver. Everybody on Z team, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. Now you say, well, uh, where and how do I pay my vow? Well, uh, we've ministered spiritual things to you, so it's fitting that you would bless Z Church, that we're here to bless you, help us be a blessing, and we'll we'll receive your, your gift and offer it up to God. That's our sacerdotal duty. Praise God. And in just a moment, we're going to have communion. And so important because, uh, you know, when we, when we remember what God did for us, it's very important. It's very powerful. We have communion every time we get together. And then after that, I'm going to come back and we're going to talk to our regulars about tithes and offerings. But if you have a vow to give to God, go to zchurch. Uh, dot life forward slash give. And there's four different ways to give there and do it today. Do it while you're thinking about it. Don't put it off. Make a make a power vow now. Because there's power in a vow. Amen. Praise God. Uh, let's go ahead and if you will, uh, Maria, let's have communion. Amen. Um, let me let me start uh, on the same lines of the the subject on pastor in Ezekiel chapter thirty seven verse twenty three. It says they shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols or their detestable things or with any of their transgressions, but I will save them from all the backsliding in which they have sinned. Amen. And I will cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Amen. Perfect. If you have a different a different um, version of the Bible, they might have translated the word that says here backsliding in this version as apostasy. Although we understand through the Hebrew word moshab that this is not the same word that is used as apostasy, and it doesn't uh, go in agreement with the scriptures that talk about the real results of apostasy, like the pastor has just taught us. Apostasy is something totally different than just backsliding. The word that is used here is used as moshap, which is, it, it will be literally a seat, an assembly, a dwelling place, a dwelling or dwellers. So it's saying in the place that you have sinned, I will save you from the place where you have sinned. That's what it's saying. And if right now you're finding yourself in a place where you have been sinning, you can receive that salvation through communion. What is communion? Communion is what we have been talking about. It's another manifestation of a vow, a promise, a, a contract, a covenant, an agreement, a commitment. It's like a ring. Communion is exactly like a ring for that commitment. And everything in the spirit is a salvation in Ephesians 2.8. By grace, 
through faith. By grace, you understand that God has offered, that he has already granted, provided, made available through Christ salvation and deliverance and acceptance and and communion with God. And through communion, you receive by faith and you say, amen. I believe it. I claim it. I receive it. I say, yes, I am open. And if something there doesn't agree with what the word says, you need to understand that God is faithful, that God is truth. And if it's not there yet, it's on the way. It's It's coming. It will be. It's in progress. It's loading like a program, like like a website. It's it's loading. And through communion, you are receiving it. So don't go to the um, customer service on 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 heaven and and go furious about your order that that this hasn't happened that this is not there yet that what a, because you should believe in the one that it's sending you should believe in the one that has promised that is trustworthy in his character in how much he cares for you that he's never too late so don't cancel your requests Don't move without it. Don't move on without it. Don't move in position on on the other way. Lay down and wait. Waiting in the word of God is not just um, going away and do something different and and forget about it. That waiting means to lay down in wait like, Mm -hmm. like 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 an army would. They are... Real, they're in position, straightforward, waiting for what's coming, laying way through communion right now in the expectation of what the Lord is doing. Take communion with us to say yes, to say amen, to say I do receive that salvation. I reconcile with the Lord right now. I come back to you, Lord. That's what we're doing right now through communion. Praise let's God. get ready then. Yes. And let's get that bread or whatever you have. If it's made of flour, it works. And let's make it as a representation of the bo- broken body of Christ that made that offer available, that Praise made God. that agreement, that, that that is granted. It was granted because of Jesus' sacrifice. And now Praise we're God. taking it and making it by faith. In Jesus we're name. receiving that grace through faith. We're receiving it in the Amen. form of a bread. Let's take it right now. And now the same way we're taking that representation of his blood because of his sacrifice. Because of what he did, he made a check already set up for us to claim. And now through communion, we're getting that ring on our finger. We're saying yes to his offer. We're reconciling with him. We're bringing this to the heavenly bank and say, Jesus already made this available for me. I do believe it. I am open to it. I'm here to claim it. Yes. And then let's wait. Praise it's going to happen. Praise let's God. take the one. Praise God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Pastor, you know, praise God. Uh, Thank you, Maria. Praise God. Um, Will we do the prayer now, or do you want to do the offering? I'm going to do the offering, and then we're going to come back. So that'll give you a little bit more time to get that prayer request in. And uh, if you prayed with us earlier about coming back to God and and being tender towards him again, let us know. We want to hold you up in our prayers. So send us an email at info at zchurch.org. 
life. Now I'm going to receive that offering. And you don't come, go far. Back, no, we're going to do the prayer request. Yes. Praise God. I really am not going to add anything to what I said. I, I've said enough yes. in, uh, about giving and money, but I will just add this one little thing. There's several ways to give. Tithes, which really isn't giving. It's returning it to God, the first fruit. And then there are offerings, which is that which is over and above. And then there are the vows. They're in a couple of different categories, but we'll just say a vow. And today we've been talking about making a vow. I don't want to omit the other, which are the tithes and offerings. And so uh, make sure that you honor God with your tithes and offerings. A vow does not exempt you from tithes and offerings. It's over and above your tithes and offerings. Good. All right, Father, thank you for everyone who's watching and listening and ready to honor you with our tithes and offerings. I pray for them that the windows of heaven will be open. You'll pour out a blessing that they won't be able to contain it in Jesus' name. Jesus. Praise God. Now, there's going to be a, a link in the comments about giving, zchurch.life forward slash uh, give. And take care of that right now. We're going to have a little video while we're giving, and then we're going to come back and have live prayer requests. Praise God. Thank you so very much. Uh, may I have the speaker view there, Tim? Thank you so much. Praise God for a great message. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourselves and let us just give God glory for the word that came Amen. from the pastor today. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, 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 Praise God. 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 Praise come back to doing that. And you know, you say, well, what was it? Well, that's none of your business. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> and I'm not going to ask you about yours, but I tell you what, isn't God good? Yes. You know, let yes. us say this. The Bible says in uh, Psalms, let, uh, uh, let the righteous say, the Lord is good. So I'm going to ask you to say it with me. The Lord, the Lord is, is good, good. and His mercy, mercy endures forever. That was the message today. The Lord is good, and yes. His mercy endures forever. Terry, do we have yes. any prayer requests? Yes, we do. One is uh, Deborah. Pray healing for her gallbladder and pancreas that she will not need surgery. Okay. I'm going to ask yeah. Chris if he will pray for her. Chris, are you there? I I I am I am here. Um, could could I hear that one more time, Terry? Uh, Deborah, that she for her gallbladder and pancreas that she will not need surgery. Um, Heavenly Father, um, you are gracious and your does endure forever. 
Yes, and we Jesus. pray for Deborah. Yes. We lift her up to you. She doesn't want to go through surgery. And we know that all things are possible with you. All yes. things are possible with you. This is not impossible with you. And we pr pray that your healing power now would enter her body and heal yes. her. Yes. Heal her of, uh, of her ailment. In Jesus' yes. name. Amen. 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 Let's give Amen. God glory Amen. for answering prayer. Yeah. Praise Amen. God. Carrie, do we have any more? Yes, one more. This is for Lindy. Uh, she's 11 years old, and she's having problems with crossing of the eyes. She was diagnosed with brain aneurysms that are pressing on her optic nerve. Wow. Well, I know that Pastor Sharon, she has had miracles with her grandchild. And so, Pastor Sharon, would you pray for her, please? Yes. Lord, we lift Lindy to you and we thank you for the mir your miracle power doing a work in her eyes in the name of Jesus. We speak to her eyes to uncross and be normal, to be complete healing of her eyes. We give you glory for it, Lord. You're faithful and true. And I thank you for doing a work in her body, setting yes. her aright in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory and praise all for it. All the glory. Thank Let's you. give God Amen. glory praise for that. God. Praise, praise God. God. Praise, 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 praise God. Just to check to make certain. Is there any more? Uh, that's all I see this time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Did I see Pastor Sharon's hand go up? Oh, I just wanted to say that was very fitting, Pastor Loretta, because you probably don't know this. I was born with my eyes crossed. Wow. <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost. Praise well, you are absolutely <laughs> not uncrossed eyes now. I don't know how to say that, but praise God. Before Glory. we leave, I just want, the pastor's already prayed. Okay, we have a give him glory. And I'll let the whoever's responsible for that. Terry, um, will you just quickly pray uh, again for anyone that is still concerned about coming back to God, feeling that they have failed God or whatever the case may be. Would you just plead the blood of Jesus over that so that the word will take place in their yes, lives? Yes, Father, we thank you for them, Lord. We pray that they will come boldly, come freely, come a-running. And Lord, we, we denounce any shame or any, we lay those things behind us in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over their thought processes, Lord, that they will run with all their hearts to you, yes. your wide, wonderful open arms. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that this word will take root and grow. And Father, that they'll even bring others with them as they come yes. and pray in Jesus' yes. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we just thank God for miracles. And now I'm going to believe that would be Elder Bob that will start our um, give him glory or YZ Church. Hi, my name is Gail Gallimore, and I just wanted to share with you why I thought that Z Church was such a great place to spend every Saturday morning um, in service. Um, we have two of the most wonderful pastors, Pastor Larry Huggins and his wife Loretta. They both minister to us and speak the word of God, and it is so enjoyable. They actually share the true word of God. So I want to invite you to zchurch.life and come and enjoy our service on Saturday mornings. Thank you. Zchurch.life Thank you, Bob. I'll quickly give the announcements. Before the afterglow begins, uh, we invite you to visit our website, zchurch.life. You'll find the Z Church blog there and all our past services, and they'll encourage you. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll find the Zoom links for all our Zoe group meetings also. If you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team, you can email info at zchurch.life. There are many opportunities available, and there's a place for you. I also encourage you to watch Pastor Larry's Your Good Life devotional clips on Facebook weekdays at 7 a.m. on the Z Church Facebook page.
We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly. And our host today is Chris. If you would like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. If you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know and they'll bring your question into the discussion. We'd also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. Uh, Chris, I believe it's time for the afterglow. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, and I'm a living test. Thank you for uh, today's word, Pastor. I'm a living You're testament to the fact. I'm a living testament to the fact that God is married to the fighter, <laughs> and Pastor Larry played a huge role in that. When I uh, in our encounter in, in Tulsa. Um, um, and everybody here has heard this, has heard this before, where he just put his uh, hand on my shoulder and said, if he spent his time in prayer, everything would be all right. And I never forgot those words. And that's when my backsliding had begun. And those words stuck with me for 40 years. I had um, been to many, many dark places. And those words were always lingering in my mind um, and, and never let me go. And it was about seven or eight years ago um, when, when I decided, I thought, well, I'll just, I'm going to have a look at the Bible. And I just, I just opened up randomly and I opened it up to Genesis 4. And I read uh, the story of uh, God, God dealing with Cain, right? And I was, I was stunned by that God never condemned Cain. You won't find a word of condemnation mm. um, when, when he was speaking to Cain. Never condemned him. He knew what he did. And, and, and I remember reading, you know, God, God, God said to Cain, well, why the long face? What's wrong? Why the long face? <laughs> and I looked at that. And, You're God. You know, that's a silly question, <laughs> you know, but he wanted him to explain himself. And then Cain said, Cain, you know, then he had to banish Cain. And Cain said, well, you, if I go out there, they're going to kill me. And he said, well, I'll put a seal on you and you'll be okay then. So he wanted to protect Cain. He didn't condemn him. And then that's why I thought, well, God is God. And of course, I knew that before. Um, but when I had when I had been going to church, right, I, I, I went to a very religious Pentecostal church. And religion is, I think, I is the favorite tool of the devil. He loves to use religion because he'll pound you with it. You're not doing enough. You're not performing enough. You're not pleasing God. He'll pound you over the head with religion. And that's why Z Church... Um, is such a wonderful place to be. There's no religion here. There's no condemnation. Um, it, there's there's the love of God. And I remember thinking, you know, back when I when I used to see pastor preaching, right? I, I, I you know, it would be my dream to have this guy as my pastor, right? <laughs> way way back then, when I was when I was 20 years old, it would be a dream to have this guy as my pastor. And I have this guy as my pastor. So that's a that's a miracle. All right. So anybody? Okay. Javier? Yes, uh, but it's a question uh, or to see if I have it right. Uh, a vow is a promise for something that you're going to give or do in the future. Is that it? Like a commitment? Uh, is that directed to me, Javier? Yes, it could be you or anybody yeah, who knows uh, what exactly vow means. Yeah, uh, basically, a, a vow is something uh, like a in the earnest of our future. But I I have talked about a, a, another kind of vow called the tenth. That's what I was sharing with Dr. John Avanzini, and uh, it, it would take me uh, twenty or thirty minutes to really explain the tenth. But it is. 100% about the future. In hmm. fact, huh. I'll give you a hint. The Nader vow that we just talked about is something that we do now. You know, God, I'll do this if you do that. But the teeth, which is what Jacob did, and let me give you a hint where the word teeth comes from. 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, it's everything above 10%. So I can't tie the 11%, but I can, I can uh, 
give a tenth. You know, I can tie ten percent and give a, a tenth, a two tenth, a three tenth, four tenth. I'm, I'm not trying to confuse you, but that kind of giving says, when you bless me, I will give you part of that blessing back. It's a complete opposite, and uh, it, it's worth it's worth hearing about. One day soon, I'll talk to you about it because it is, it's. It's a vow on future blessings. For example, God, if you help me win the lottery, I'll give a tenth to you. <laughs> I'll give you 5%. I'll give you 10% over and above my tithe. I'll tithe and then I'll sweeten up the deal. So that's the, another kind of a vow. But there's those are two different vows. One says, I'm going to give now against my future. And the other one says, in the future, I will give a vow. Now I've got everybody wondering, what's this team business? <laughs> I, I, let me tell you something. I was so I was so excited that I had shared something with Dr. John Evansini that he had been praying about for years. He'd been praying about it for years. He said, Larry, I knew it couldn't have been a tithe. And in, in the King James, it says, seeing that God will do this for me, I'll give him a tenth of all he gives me. No, no, no. Tenth. It's two different words. If you get in the Hebrew, you'll see it. And when uh, Dr. John saw that, it, you could almost see his brain melt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Jacob, Jacob knew how to give. I said Joseph, but I meant Jacob. Jacob knew how to give because uh, Abraham was it. He tithed into God. And he God says, shall I hide this thing from Abraham, seeing that he will train his children? So we know that Abraham trained Isaac and Jacob to tithe. It's, it's interesting because God, everything God does to us is for our profit. Everything. He doesn't condemn us. And, and I remember reading in Hebrews 12, Paul was talking about when, when God chastened. He compared that to our earthly fathers and our earthly parents. They chastened us according to what seemed best to them. And then in the same verse, but God chastens us for our profit to, 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 to become holy like he has, like he is, right? So everything he does for us is our profit. Um, Tim, you have anything that'll, that, that'll profit us today? Well, I just wanted to say that uh, girl, 11-year-old girl that we prayed for, the reason her eyes were crossing, this was somebody on TikTok that asked for prayer. The reason her eyes were crossing is because she was having aneurysms in her in her head, which was pushing on the optic nerve. So it was a little bit more than that. So I just pray that, you know, the aneurysms are dissolved in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. Anthony from Nigeria, uh, would you like to just say hello? Hello, Anthony. Oh, he disappeared. I think we lost yeah. him. Just lost him. I'm not sure exactly how that call in, uh, how they're supposed it's a, it's to audio unmute. Only. It's, it's only audio, no video. But I'm not sure how they unmute. So maybe he was trying to unmute, but oh, he mute, yeah. put yeah. himself. <laughs> yeah. But that that's one of my kids from Nigeria. Yes. One of my best ones. God bless him. Yeah. <laughs> what do you well, have uh, Bob, uh, we haven't heard from you. I'm sure Chris is going to call on you. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I can certainly testify the message is true, and God is good, and 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 He leaves the ninety and nine to find the one that is back backslidden, and and uh, brings them back, and uh, that that's that's how I got where I am, and and I know we're mostly only speaking to to mildly backslidden people who have just lost our passion and. And um, and are not putting God first place, but even even when you absolutely abjectly get up, walk away, and 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 try to go to hell, um, God will still give you a last chance and bring you back. And right. He is that good. So imagine how good He is to those of you who have only forgotten to tithe. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something I've been I've been thinking about, and it's kind of alarming. There are people who've made it their mission in life to deprogram us believers and make us into agnostics or atheists, and they're they're kind of organized. I mean, it's a it's a real effort that they put forth. Uh, and there are, I've noticed this about people, backsliders try to get other people to backslide. People who leave church try to get other people to leave church. People who are offended try to get other people to become offended. And um, unbelievers want to make unbelievers out of everyone. I, I, have, to, I have to fight a little bit here in, in Spain because uh, I have a couple of friends, I love them, but they want to kind of mock me a little bit in my faith and I won't let them do it. I'm not mean, but I'll just, I'll just stare them down or I'll say something. And uh, it's so interesting. This one friend of mine, uh, was, he was asking me some questions. So I, I told him the truth. I told him about miracles and so forth and things that I'd seen and miracles that I had received. And he starts, uh, saying, no, 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 that doesn't happen. I said, are you calling me a liar? And I just stared at him. And he said, no, Good no, I'm you. not calling you a liar. I said, you're talking about my faith here. And he said, oh, I apologize. Well, he's been having trouble, back trouble, uh, uh, hernia, a bunch of stuff. And one day I gave him a hug. We had coffee and I gave him a hug. And he said, hey, you believe in miracles? Just pray for me. So I did. I just hugged him a little tighter and prayed. And he just sent me a message yesterday. He said, I am totally 100% healed. Praise uh, God. Jesus. So instead yeah. of letting them influence us, we need to influence yes. them. Yeah. And Yeah. I remember listening to Ed Dufresne, um, and he said one of the most profound statements about Christianity. He was asked, why Christianity? And he said, what else is there? And that just that just struck me, you know, very very why, simple, right? Say that again. He, say that. Again. They, they said, why, "Why Christianity?" And he said, "What else is there?" What else is there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> Ed Dufresne. I was blown away. I mean, I, I yeah. thought, how profound, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds like you know that's something Pastor Larry would say too. You know, what <laughs> What else is there? Yeah. yeah. What do you What do you have to offer? You know, do you have something to offer? Uh, that's, be that's better than, you know, yeah. um, Jesus, you know. <laughs> I I just had something. Um, when Brother Huggins was talking about giving to God um, or giving your tithes and offerings, we had a lady in our church that uh, her husband had passed away and she was due to get his life insurance. But there was some... Um, reason that they wouldn't release the money and I, I, I'm talking like three hundred thousand dollars and so she came up and she was crying and said you know pray that that the money will be released and I'll give it back to God you know his his um an offering and the tithes I'll, I'll pay it well a couple of months later the money came through and she had been a faithful person to our church. But all of a sudden, talk about going from the front pew to the middle pew to the back and out the door. She went out the door. She bought a new house, a new car, all kinds of, you know, things that, that was purchased with this money, but never gave it to God. We didn't, we didn't see a penny of it. The church didn't. But you know what? Don't make a vow to God and not go through with it. Because, you know, it was probably six months later. She didn't have a penny to her name. Wow. And, and I thought, you know what? <laughs> God's going to get his money no matter how. <laughs> and uh, so I, ju I just say, you know, don't make that vow. To God. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's better to not make a vow than to make a vow and not then keep break it. I, I've seen that happen so many times. Uh, there's a, a group of people in Northern California, and I've 
God used me to help them become millionaires. It's a, it's one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen anywhere financially. Out of, out of 30 people in this church, 20 of them became multimillionaires within a year. And they had promised to do all kinds of things for me and my ministry. And they didn't do it. Well, you know, you can't hold people's feet to the fire and say, listen, you promised, now pay up. But I watch what happened. Sickness started going through them. They had all this money that they couldn't enjoy it because almost everyone to the last one got sick and died. Mm. Now, I don't think God made them sick, and I don't think God killed them. I think what happened is that they had made a vow and didn't keep it, and it opened the enemy to come in and mm -hmm. exploit that. Mm -hmm. You know, we give no place to the devil, and making a vow and not keeping it gives place to the devil. Mm. Very dangerous stuff. Catherine Ryan and company. Bunker down in Florida, long time no see. Welcome back. Do you have a, a word for us? And there's Howard. I see. I see that nose. He's hiding. <laughs> I see the nose. He's like, no, I see you, Catherine. Stop putting me on. I'm like, <laughs> I recognize that nose. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, Amen, Reverend Larry. Just thank you for ev all your wisdom and everything. Everyone's sharing, but. Just, yeah, we don't want to leave any open doors to the enemy. It's very, yeah. that covenant we have with the Lord, the vows we make with the Lord, that's so, so valuable and um, important. And Dad, I don't know if you have anything you want to say hi or encourage people. Well, or... well yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I've seen some of the same things that, that Pastor Larry was talking about, you know, in, in my life uh, with, I had a dear friend who was, uh, called to be an evangelist, and he became a very successful salesperson. So he used his evangelistic gift to uh, just make all kinds of sales. He built this business up and all that. And I and I tried to get him. And the more successful he got, the further he went away from the Lord. You know, and I couldn't figure it out. And I said to him, I said, you know, what, what's going on? And and uh, he just got entangled with the world, and it became very successful. So at a very young age, he was a multimillionaire, like Larry was saying, and it destroyed him. And I I had to go to his funeral. He was 34 years old when, when, he, when he passed. And it was just, you, you see this over and over and over again. And I guess... The the thing the thing of that was just that you know he had so much potential. The devil wants to steal our future. He wants to steal our futures. He's after our, especially if you're younger, but for all of us, whether we're young or old, he wants to steal our future. And I saw that with my friend. And if I if I could do anything, it would just be to encourage people, you know, to be very serious about the things of God. You know, be very serious about the things of God because like. Reverend Larry was saying, you know, if if we, God, I don't, I agree a hundred percent. You know, He doesn't cause these things, but if if we break the hedge open ourselves, we're knocking down the back, you know, the back gate and the back wall and everything else, and then we wonder how the devil's dog got in and bit us. Well, we shouldn't have to wonder. But anyway, I just I'm so grateful for you guys and your ministry, and we're. Uh, we're doing pretty well down here. We just a lot of challenges, a lot of. I mean, Florida is just. Uh, it's quite a. Uh, it's in a lot of turmoil because you have, we have people moving in here from New York and New Jersey almost daily. They're just flooding out of the East Coast and flooding down here, and so it's just really tumultuous. Um, the church we're in, we have a, a good church, but they they have all that tone to. Uh, activity going on and so just pray for us for direction so that we can hear clear from God and and hear clearly what the Lord has for us but it's really quite active place down here <laughs> lots going on we're gonna uh, Howard let me jump in here we'll pray for you right now I'm a big believer if somebody says pray for us the best time to do that is amen right Joseph uh, I'm gonna ask you to pray for 
uh, the Ryan family and what God has sent them to do in Florida. That uh, probably they're there because it's tumultuous. <laughs> you know, God sends us into a, a hot spot sometimes. Go ahead, Joseph. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord. We come to you with a heart of thanksgiving to make our request made for the Ryan family that they can hear clearly from you, to see their direction, to uh, to tide this uh, the storm, this this tumultuous time in their in their path. Um, you know their heart. You know they're all in. You know their tithers. Ten um, percent is a hundred percent advantage. I know we know that. So please just continue to give them the advantage that they need to continue to serve you and to be to be just lights for all these. It's it's re- the the harvest is ripe. It's 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 all these new people coming into uh, it's fruit. They, they, there's harvest there. Uh, bringing souls to you so that they'll know you, not for religion, but for your relationship, Lord. Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Amen. Just, I think Amen. I just got a word from the Lord there uh, while you were praying, Joseph. Um, now's the time to reach them, Howard, because they've made a big change. Okay. And it will be easier for them to make another change. So take Amen. advantage yes, of the changes that are going on in their lives to help them change for Christ. Mm. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Yeah. Yes. 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 You know what I would do if I were you, if somebody was telling me about, you know, uh, their move and, you know, that's always (laughs) got a lot of drama when we move. Just tell them, uh, um, yeah, God brought you down here so that he could, uh, he could uh, get you saved. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, we have a couple of relationships with uh, people that have just moved here. One f- couple is from uh, where is it? Mississippi. Oh, ben yeah. Georgia. But they're, they're saved. Right? They're saved, but we've been able to uh, work with them in the ministry and Pouring help them. help 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 them, and they've been helping us, and it's been really uh, dy- a really great dynamic, and and so yeah, and then yeah. That makes a lot of sense. We got we have a lot on our hearts that the Lord has, I think, been showing my dad and our family and like the next steps. Like you just got to take those steps. And we do a lot of like, where do you want us to go today, Lord? And who do we want to reach today? But thank you for that, Revler. Yeah, you're. I say that to people too. I'm like, God saved you. You're here because God has a purpose for you. Like, but maybe I should say something like, Yeah, God moved you so you can know Him. Like, let's go right now. And uh, yes, um, I we're. I think we're expecting some great things this year. Last year was pretty crazy. We are moving again in a week. We've been here for two months in this home. We're in the eight. We're in the same area. Just we have to move houses a lot. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, but it's a lot and we're working. We're all, we're all keeping active in, in ministry and which is work. And we minister where we're working. Um, I, I got a job at a CPA firm. Oh, that's wow. good for you. Yeah. So, so I, I'm helping. I believe them. you have, a, I, I believe you have a job with the, with the, uh, uh City of, of uh, can't think of the name of it. Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine. You said that before, yes. Yeah, you ought to go in there and tell them, "Hey, you need me." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Reverend Larry that you um, push us by the Holy Ghost to do things that may be uncomfortable for us. <laughs> like maybe not natural personality for my dad to be going in there like that, but. <laughs> You know, Dr. Stumbrell said something that I uh, I identify with. He said, God never called me to do anything I could do. Everything he called me to do was impossible. And um, if if he just calls us to do what we can do, then we get the glory. But if he calls us to do what we can't do, he gets the glory. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's a little uncomfortable, but uh, you're you're in a very special area that very few people have enough courage to step into. You've stepped out of your comfort zone. 
And that's really where the miracles take place, you know, stepping out of the boat. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, yep, it's all impossible. So <laughs> I think that's a good <laughs> <to> God. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Amen. Then we I've, have, always, uh, I've always experienced the, the greatest miracles, for example, when I'm on the doing crusades. When I've been totally exhausted mm. and at the end of myself, mm. um, and I would just say, "Well, God, it's just you and me, and if you don't come through, nothing's going to happen here." Mm. Hey. T.L. Osborne said one time that uh, he was one of my mentors. He said that at one of his crusades, nothing was happening, no miracles, nothing. Mm. And he went to God and he was kind of complaining about it. And God said, you're trying too hard. He, he said, just let go and let me. <laughs> yes. So he all said, okay, it's, it's all yours. And then the miracles started happening. Mm, um, it, it's sometimes it's hard to let go because we've been, we've been accustomed to, you know, managing everything, sometimes yeah. micromanaging everything. Yeah. But uh, uh I read a testimony about A. A. Allen, and A. A. Allen had amazing miracles in his ministry. And I knew a couple of people who worked for him behind the scenes. I never, I never met him, and never went to one of his meetings. Pastor Loretta went to a couple of his meetings, mm. but uh, these people said that he would uh, occasionally come in. They had a big tent that would seat ten thousand people. And he had a, an area behind uh, the platform that was curtained off, kind of like a green room today. And he would walk in a few minutes before the, it was time for him to preach. He would sit down in a chair and he would say, well, God, it's just you and me. <laughs> and he would walk out and miracles would start happening. He had the ability to just... Let go and let God be God. Yeah. I have a friend in Lima. He's uh, uh, Javier and, and Ana Maria know him, uh, Robert Berenger. And Robert built a mega church in, in Peru, an American boy from San Diego, a surfer. <laughs> Got something in common with uh, Javier. And in fact, he built churches all over Peru. I, I had lunch with him one time with Jan. Jan and I had lunch with him one time. Yeah, in fact, Jan introduced me to Robert. No, yeah. No, no, Carl, no, sorry, Carl Baranzik introduced me to to, to uh, Robert Berger. But I asked Robert, I said, well, what's the secret sauce? He said, I just show up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wait, Reverend you know, Larry. That, that, that's not a very long seminar if you go to one of his church growth seminars. <laughs> just show up. My my dad was just praying that. We were talking about that as a family this morning. My dad's like, okay, we're just going to be there. We're showing up. <laughs> like, just so, show up. amen. Did I, I think I told you about uh, a lady in uh, Louisiana that that wanted to have a wanted to have a, a revival. Mm -hmm. It was actually Lester Summerall's sister, Polly, when she was a teenager. She wanted to have a revival, so they had a, a vacant lot next to their house, and she went out there and pulled up weeds and, and got it all raked and mowed and then uh, built a brush arbor. I don't know if you know what a brush arbor is, but it's not a tent. It's just some poles with uh, some brush piled on top to make a shade. And yeah. it'll keep the moisture off, off of you at night and be shade during the day. It's called a brush arbor. I mm. preached under brush arbors, by the way. I preached everywhere. And so Polly did all this work and she advertised and went around the neighborhood and passed out flyers and and really nothing happened. She ran this meeting for a week or so. But there was one little 10-year-old boy who was tongue-tied who, who went to the altar and got saved. And he was running around the meeting saying, I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> His name was Jimmy Swagger. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the only person she reached. 
<laughs> Amen. Okay. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, kiddos, uh, Pastor Loretta has something uh, on the table for me. Oh, it's not ready. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We got a couple of hands up. <laughs> And that means yeah, you have Javier, to stay longer. <laughs> Javier, do you have a, something to say? No, yeah, just a comment. A comment about uh, people that are millionaire or multi-millionaire <coughs> that are very loved. They got a lot of fans. They're very famous. And you think, oh, they, they got everything in their life. And then they end up dead with drugs or alcohol or they commit suicide and say, what's happening? And I, I think it is that they think that all those things are going to make them happy. That's the only way to get happy or to get a, a nice life. But then it will, we, the only way to really be happy and have a nice life is with Christ. So when they get all these things, they say, okay, I did it. I have all these things, but I'm not happy. So there's no way I will never be happy. It's impossible to be happy. So they just kill themselves or uh, drug or boost themselves to death. That's it. I have a, I have a friend who uh, his net worth is over 20 million personal worth. And um, he's a friend of mine. And one day he said to me, uh, with tears in his eyes, he said, my son hates me. He said, he hates me. So money doesn't make people exempt from having family problems or relationship problems mm -hmm. or emotional problems, what have you. In, some, in fact, sometimes it intensifies it. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, I'm in my scrubs and my hairdress and I'm making uh, eggplant parmesan for my husband. Should have thrown some flour in my face and a little bit of water so you <laughs> all could have thought I was really doing this hard. What's happening with Christine? She, she black, lost all she of black, her color. She's black and white tonight. Oh, she is. Yeah. <laughs> so she's she's broadcasting from the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Pastor Bill. Well, I wanted to say a couple of things. One, um, good job. I know that you know you were right online, uh, Maria, with the message about the apost apostasy and so forth. Uh, that is just people get confused about that. Oh, she has her hand up. Well, I didn't that, put my hand okay. up. So I guess I, I'm just, I'm, I'm pulling rank here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted to say that, well, um, you're just gazing in my eyes and I'm just getting overwhelmed oh. by your gaze. <laughs> We lost, we lost Maria. <laughs> we have totally lost Maria. Um, I wanted to go back to when we were in Mexico, in Leon, Mexico. Oh, you want to go back to Mexico? No, I don't want to go. But I mean, I, I love Mexico people. I'm just, praise God. Ah. At any rate, <laughs> that's another story. Hallelujah, Shandai. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> Terry always loves it when I say Shandai. <laughs> She's old Pentecostal like I am. <laughs> But I want to just point out, talking about backsliders and people who had, who who have been mistreated and ostracized. Uh, Gail will remember this. Her mother, Pastor uh, Larry, got up and this crowd. I think it was about two thousand people or so in Leon, and Pastor talked about. Um, Mary Magdalene, you remember that? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. You might tell the story, and my heart gets really, my heart hurts. Pastor talked about this woman. She had been abused and everything. Do you remember that, Gail? I need a verbal yes. yes. I'm like the airlines. Yes, I, I need a verbal I yes. <laughs> I remember. 
Oh, yeah, she was with her, and 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 it was still, you know, because it was so embarrassing, really, what God was saying. Not it was embarrassing, but just talk. God just said this woman just put it all out there, and it was it was tragic. This lady had a tragic life, and she had left God because of that, because she had just been hurt so much and abused so much. And he, so pastor said, someone, you know, said this, uh, there was this big, you know, I think 2000 people or so. And there was this wide aisle and this lone, broken young lady. You remember that gal? She just barely could walk. I mean, it was as if she was carrying a ton of bricks on her shoulder and she could, she was just like one f- Step was so heavy, she could barely do it. I don't know. It's just she was. And finally, uh, while she was doing that, Pastor Larry, I'm not sure exactly the turn of events, but Pastor Larry asked your mother, Pastor um, Francis Edge, to come up. Francis Edge, she must have known that this is what was going to happen. And she just, and it wasn't like, oh, what? She just got up. She was in the middle and she stood there. And she said, come on, child. She just kind of, come on, baby. This girl fell into her, I'm starting to cry. This girl fell into her arms and she cried and cried. That was the turning point in that miracle service. Yeah, she, um, I call her Maria Magdalena. I don't, I don't know her name, but she stayed in the kneeling before the, well, it was really a platform. We didn't have an altar, but in front of the platform, after Sister Francis ministered she to him, she was up there for an hour and 20 minutes. Pastor Francis said, Gail's mother just held that young lady, just held yeah. her. She may have never been loved that way ever in her life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, right. I, I checked up on her quite a few times. And I would ask the pastor uh, of the church that she joined up with, uh, how's Mar- uh, Maria Magdalena doing? And they would say she's doing very well. So it, it was, as Pastor Loretta said, uh, oh, my eyes are yeah, it was, it was just a, an illustrated sermon of how much God loves a backslider. Mm. Um, and this woman could be... Uh, if I may say, and I really, I don't know how this is going out on the Facebook or what have you, but God did a point of basically reading her mail, if you understand my Mm -hmm. jest. And it it just was, nothing was left to the imagination. I mean, it wasn't graphic or anything like that, but if you're knowledgeable a little bit in the world, if you're over... 15 years old, you understood what was going on in her life. That age is lower today. Oh, well, back then it was 15. And for everyone to see how God loved this woman. Mm-hmm. So whoever's listening, God loves you. Yeah. Um, Pastor Loretta, uh, something very similar happened to me in, in Megalaya. Meghalaya is um, part of the Indian tea provinces that's very remote near Burma. And uh, I took what I call the Jeep ride from hell. I had a <coughs> with me, and it really was. It was the most arduous, painful Jeep ride I've ever had in my life. Uh, froth was froth was danger. <laughs> it was terrible. And the conditions were terrible. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of it, but it really was physically. Before Loretta, so I wasn't there. It, physically, it was, well, I wouldn't have taken you on a trip like this. Physically, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was one of the most difficult challenges I'd ever had physically. But um, way up in a remote part of Megalaya, which is the rainiest place on earth, they have 25 mm. feet of rain every year. It is the, they have the most rainfall of any place on earth. And I'm in this remote area under a ragged tent. I've been through hell trying to get there. And the first thing that I said before I preached or ministered to anyone, I said, there is a woman here, a young girl, 
you're 17 years old. You had a boyfriend. He he promised uh, marriage. You gave yourself to him. He took advantage of you sexually. After he had his way, he rejected you. He didn't want anything to do with you. Your heart was broken. You've been practicing suicide. You've been collecting pills. You've got a handful of pills that are enough to be fatal. You've actually been taking the pills, putting them to your mouth, but not putting them in your mouth and taking a drink of water, simulating what you'll do on the day you take your life. And you think your life is over. You think that God doesn't love you anymore. You think that your parents and your church will reject you. And I kept talking this way, and I said, but they won't reject you. They'll accept you, and God will accept you, and and uh, then and started giving these words of reconciliation, and all of a sudden, this 17-year-old burst out crying and ran to the front and was miraculously and gloriously restored the whole church jumped on her, kissed her, held her, prayed for her. It, it was one of the most dramatic things I'd ever seen. And later, and this happened for years, people said, we still talk about God bringing a man of God 14,000 miles to reach one person. And you know what? Yes. Uh, I, I have to tell you, maybe we're going to have church again. I don't know, but I have to tell Amen. you. I have to tell you, we've all been there. Maybe some of us, I say us just to make certain we don't, you know, single out anyone. Maybe some of us have had like a lived in church, born in church, what have you. And some of us may have been lived in church, born in church. I know I was. <laughs> I, th I think my, the church was next to the hospital because I grew up in Church of God in Christ. However, whatever the case may be, choices came, situations came, whatever the case may be. But I have to tell you, and this is not just for women. <laughs> I love what Chris said once. He said he loved about Z Church. My eyes are burning from all my makeup. So if I look like Tim Burton's movie, you know, do you understand? <laughs> um as Chris said, that what he loved about Z Church is no condemnation. Well, mm -hmm. that's the best thing you could have said. Best thing. Because, you know, you said, Pastor, in the message that God is able to forgive everything. Well, we had the greatest example. Adam blew it. And God said, okay, you blew it, blah, 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 blah. You can get the interpretation by reading the first couple of chapters of Genesis. I've got, I've got the interpretation. Okay. I'm going to but at the same time, he said, but I'm going to send you someone that's going to deliver you. Come on, think about that. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he could forgive Adam, how much? I mean, Adam put us all in a in a stent, <laughs> but you didn't do that to whatever. So whoever is listening, I just I was thinking about Pastor Edge. Uh, we just loved her. We love Gail. We love Randy. We love the family. Pastor Edge was just one. If you had ever, if you had had the chance to meet her, um. And, and Pastor Ed, I mean, Sister Gail will understand. Next to my mom, she was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, I can't let anyone be more fabulous than my mom, of course. But all you feel that way about your mom. Whoever it is that's listening to this Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, reach out to Z Church because we have a prayer team. We have women. Terry, Christine, Maria, handmaidens of the Lord, hand, uh, Joy, uh, Pastor Sharon. We have, and the, our men who pray. And I'm telling you, prayers get answered here. And I can't, I cannot, not uh, mention Anna Maria. So um, that's what I wanted to say. Now I'm going to go back and put my my apron on and be very domesticated. 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Lord. I have to tell you, the first two months of my marriage, Pastor Larry didn't know if I could cook or boil water because I decided I didn't want to create a habit I could not keep up. <laughs> uh, Pastor Loretta? Yes. Go cook me supper. Praise <laughs> the Lord. You see him fall on the floor, Terry? Just start praying. <laughs> Come on, Chris. Try to Praise get the this Lord. thing back on track. <laughs> no, it's, it's very enjoyable, very nourishing. Uh, Maria, you have something? I loved your uh, communion uh, uh, talk. That Amen. was very, 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 very powerful. But you, you did go over the allotted three minutes. So could you keep it short? <laughs> <laughs> it was good it was good uh, I, I think that the we're about time to, to wrap up um, so I wouldn't want to add too much it was just that um, the Ryans were talking about you know things happen when you have a call in and, and you just come straight there has been people that have thought have heard those stories and they would say, ah, maybe I'm better off not trying because if I do and I mess up, then things are going to get worse or stuff like that. And, and this is the thing. This, this is how I explain it. Everybody is born going to hell. That, that's an inborn affection. And the difference is if it's going to be now or later. <laughs> if you don't have Jesus, the human being it's is born fallen. That's it. And mm -hmm. and and you were born fallen. Now, uh, if you if if the enemy, this world is just just swarm with this vicious in entities, they're swarming there. This is a minefield. If if you don't go for God, you're just letting them eat you slowly. Just cook you slowly like a frog. If they see that there is a little spark of potential, they're going to try to bait you to get you out of the game as soon as possible. If yeah. you don't respond to God, you're still being cooked. The best way to get out of this mind field is with God. You need to wake up because you are being cooked regardless. Yeah, that's right. And, and either you right now respond to God and get through this mind field as best as possible to salvation. Or you're going to find yourself just wasted. And, and and it's like it's not like if you go for God, things are gonna get worse. You you don't understand things are really, really bad if you are not with him. Amen. Amen. Good word. Um, well, I think I think that's a wrap. And, and Maria, would you like to close us out in prayer? Absolutely. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that we received from you today survival life real life weapons mighty weapons and tools and lord in jesus name we declare that we are not forgetful hearers that we will be doers of the word that we will not let anything choke what you have sown in us today yes. that we are good ground good. that we will bring that fruit that that word is not going to return unto you void. It's going to do in our lives what you have sent it for. It's going to produce the fruit. Yes. The yes. fruit of love and mercy and grace and favor, restoration, comfort, healing, salvation, deliverance. All that, Lord, we have that seed. We are good soiled. We're going to see it. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. Is going to happen, not because of us, mm -hmm. but because we're saying yes and amen, and because you are mighty enough 
to make it happen. We believe it. We receive it. It's in Jesus' name we declare it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Jesus. See you next week.